Hey everyone, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In this video, we're going to talk about the Continuous Time Fourier series, but before you watch this video, make sure you've watched the Continuous Time Eigenfunctions video, because that's sort of laying the foundation for this video. And the main idea in this is that we can build any Fourier, we're going to go on from the Eigenfunction property to show we can build almost any interesting periodic Continuous Time signal out of a weighted sum of complex exponentials, and so we know that from the eigenfunction property, each of those exponentials will go through any LTI system just scaled by the system function for that exponent. So it's a particular choice of the S, choosing the S of Ks to be a particular choice of harmonically related frequencies, as we call them. So let me uh, switch over to the whiteboard and remind you of the eigenfunction story and then go on and show how the special case of that, the Fourier transforms, we're going to use. Okay, so the eigenfunction property, or I, I misspoke a second ago, actually. I mean the Fourier series, not the Fourier transforms. Fourier transforms have to wait a few more weeks yet. But for uh, the eigenfunction property, again, says that if we have a, an exponential signal e to the st into a linear time invariant system, the output of the system, y of t, will be the same exponential e to the st scaled by some gain h of s that we call the system function. So, and particularly that says if we can build our input out of a weighted sum of exponentials, so we choose a bunch of different values of s and, and make add them together weighted by some weights a sub k. So for the choice s, sub k, s sub k, we use a sub k as the weight, and then we add a whole bunch of them together. Linear, linearity guarantees that the output will be the same weighted sum of the individual outputs. So I have the sum of over k of a sub k, h sub s sub k, the system function for each exponential, times that exponential signal. Okay, and so the natural question is, well, where can we build interesting signals with this? This just looks like a lot of mathematical hieroglyphics at this point. And uh, Fourier's beautiful insight was that if I choose those s of k's to be multiples of the fundamental frequency of a periodic signal, I can actually make pretty much any periodic signal as a weighted sum of these. So if x of t is a periodic signal with period t, we know it has a fundamental frequency, omega naught is 2 pi over t. And so what we want to do, or what Fourier's idea is, we're going to choose the s sub k's, the, the, the family of exponents we want to use in our exponential signals, to just be different multiples of that fundamental frequency, right? So you could also say this is j times 2 pi k over t. And we call the kth choice the kth harmonic. So we have the, for the different properties of the fundamental signal. And so what it turns out for any interesting, any practical engineering periodic signal, we can build it out of these. This is the right toolkit, or these are the right Lego bricks, if you like, the building blocks we need to make any periodic signal. There are a few weird mathematical exceptions, but in practical engineering systems, this approach works very well. Just the question is, if how do I find the A's? You say, well, that's great, but you know, I could make up some AKs and look at the signal and see if I got what I want. But you know, in real life, I'm going to have some signal I want to model, and I need to know what the A sub Ks are. A, a good way to think about this, uh, many years ago, my friend Hamid Nawab gave me this analogy, is to think that, that this, this sum is like a recipe. It's telling you how to build the signal out of it. So let's rewrite that recipe uh, using our, our special ingredients, the complex exponentials that are multiples of the fundamental frequency. Let me get a clean page for that. So again, the continuous time Fourier series is the, is, is the specific version using this eigenfunction property where we say we're going to write x of t to be the weighted sum uh, from minus infinity, k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity of a sub k e to the j k omega naught t. And so when I think of this, like I was saying a second ago, in the recipe analogy, this k times omega naught is the frequency, right? And we call these harmonics because they're multiples of some basic fundamental frequency, omega naught. Right? Omega naught is the fundamental frequency. And in the recipe analogy, the other question is, well, how do I know how much of each ingredient? Well, the a sub k is, is is how much of each frequency to add. Although it's complex, 
So it has a mag a sub k is a complex number. It has a magnitude and phase. So the magnitude is actually telling me how much to add, and the phase is telling me how to shift this exponential left and right, how to change the phase of the underlying ex sinusoids hidden inside Euler's relationship for e to the j k omega naught t. So this is the version of the continuous time Fourier series uh, we'll use in this class. The other natural question is, well, where do the a sub k's come from? If I have a signal x of t, how do I take it apart into its recipe? And there, luckily, there's a deterministic equation for that. You don't need a, a mathematical palette to taste it and guess how much of each frequency there is. We can just follow an equation. And that's uh, called the, the continuous time Fourier series analysis equation. So that equation says that if, if I have uh, the signal x of t, the periodic signal I wanted to, to solve for, solve for the a sub k is to say what's the recipe, the a sub k's, the Fourier series for this. I take the integral over one period. So this little notation here, the bracket t, means integrating over one period. So that one period could be from 0 to t. It could be minus t over 2 to plus t over 2. We'll see there are times where it's very helpful to make that period symmetric about 0 if the waveform itself is also symmetric about 0. Uh, but basically, you can choose any limits you want as long as one continuous period of width capital T. And, and so we do that integral of x of t times e to the minus j k omega naught t dt. So in structural form, it's not too different from the Fourier uh, series, discrete time Fourier series we used last semester, and that we're taking the signal, multiplying it by a complex exponential with a negative exponent, and then combining that over one period, it's just now that combination is an integral rather than a sum that we have to integrate over continuous time instead of add over discrete. And then there's a scaling factor of one over the period out in front. Okay? So again, actually I should have filled this in earlier. The one period can be uh, an integral from zero to t. Or another common choice is to go from minus t over two to plus t over two particularly if we have a waveform that has uh, even or odd symmetry centered at the origin, the symmetric choice can be a very helpful one. Otherwise, we usually just take the first period starting from zero. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up uh, this video here. Uh, in the next video, I'll go on and show you an example of how we compute a sub k's for a very simple example waveform, a square wave. Uh, and so you have an example of using the Fourier transform to find the a sub k's from the time signal.